it will take some time <coughs> to get the PowerPoint uh, ready. Let me begin with a little preliminary introduction. What am I going to speak? <coughs> um, Mormon talked about Gentia Hills, and I will be speaking about Garo Hills. Um, what I'm trying to um, present is uh, trying to capture the reality of land rights in Garo Hills. Um, I may not succeed in connecting this with the theme of the workshop, environmental protection, land rights, and so on. But I'll try to capture the diverse voices that are there in Garo Hills. So that's the attempt that I'm making. Now, I tried to get this data quite fresh, trying to write an article for a journal. journal. So since uh, the organizers requested me to uh, do a presentation, I'm titling it as Overlapping Jurisdiction Between the modern and political um, land holding uh, you know, authorities. Yes, there it is. Can you? Just tell us when to advance. This Just next, next. Next. Yeah, this is the structure of my presentation. I begin with. Uh, I start with um, the changing, um, shifting land rights, what uh, uh, Mr. Varghese talked about. I start with that, from communal to individual land holding system. That's the starting point. What, le what led to it? What are the reasons, factors? That's the first point. I'll, I'll deal with it rather extensively. Second is, uh, I'll try to capture what I mentioned, the conflict of jurisdiction between ADC is Autonomous District Council, or six schedule uh, uh, provision that, uh, that uh, erects this particular uh, ADC. And the Nokmas. Uh, Nokmas are the chiefs, Garo chiefs. There are about, supposed to be about 1,400 Nokmas. And the land that is owned by them, or uh, managed by them, is Akhung. I would be using that word repeatedly, Akhung. Nokmas are the, put it as village, village chiefs. <clears throat> and the third, that's a major uh, uh, third part of the presentation, suggestions to improve land administration. And these are the four or five suggest suggestions that are proposed that I'll be discussing. And most of the time, I'll be trying to, trying to uh, reflect the voices from the field. That's the attempt. I'm not trying to uh, analyze. Perhaps I do a little bit, but mostly trying to capture the diverse reality <clears throat> from the field. Next. Sure. The previous. Yeah. <clears throat> These are the points now. Shifting land rights, meaning introduction of patta system. Patta system is individual land ownership. Patta is the is a word that is used, so I will be using patta repeatedly. That refers to individual land holding document. So the f first point there, why patta system? Patta or land holding document stops encroachment on land from non-tribals, garos from outside, and native garos, garos from inside, three main, uh, main topics. Why are people wanting, wanting patta system? Why is that uh, craze for individual land holding documents? Very clear, non -tribal, from non-tribals, though it is, we know that the sixth schedule gives protection, um, protection of land uh, that non-tribals cannot own, but we know there are, there are uh, uh, ways of handling this. So to stop that, people are, people are uh, going for um, Patta system. Garos from outside. We know that Garos are not only in Meghalaya, they are in Bangladesh, they are in Assam, they are in Nagaland, they are in Tripura. So a lot of Garos tend to come inside Garo Hills district of Meghalaya. So they tend to get inside and start getting a small piece of land, and then they say, uh, we want a piece of, uh, uh, piece of uh, uh, certificate to say that this is our land, because they are from outside. Now, when the Garus from outside come and get a patta, people, Garus inside itself will get more and more threatened. They don't have, because it is a communal property uh, arrangement that is there, they don't have a document with them. But Garus from outside, when they get inside and get a piece of certificate saying, this is uh, my property, the garus inside get threatened, and therefore uh, many have gone in for patta document. Yes, but patta means a lease. Yes. Now the lease holder is the, the who is the owner? Le who is the legal owner? The state. 
Yeah, that is a conflicting issue, I think. Yes. Or is it some is it a communal property, therefore the legal ownership is not the state as such, but yeah, I think this is a controversial issue. As the presentation proceeds, you will get to see the, yes. <coughs> Nehru Garos. Um, again, I think Professor Varghese, uh, Mr. Varghese, as well as Mormon, made that point. Uh, there is this internal land alienation that is taking place. Those who have money would like to have more land, and especially in the context of uh, extraction of minerals, whether it is coal, limestone, cement, and so on. So a lot of Garos who have money would like to have would like to have as much land as possible. So therefore, there is this internal land alienation within the Garo society itself, that which leads to uh, class formation and, uh, yeah. That's the first point. Second point, the Autonomous District Council encourages Patta system. The point that you made, who owns the land? No? You, uh, I've had chance to talk to different uh, uh, you know, various uh, personalities of ADC, of uh, traditional, uh, traditional leadership. And the ADC would say, the land belongs to the government, and uh, ADC is the rightful authority owning it. So very clear to the ADC that land is owned, it belongs to the government. Come to the traditional ownership, the Nokmas, they would say, no, government has no right whatsoever. Traditional land is ours. Village chief, Nokma, is the rightful authority over the communal property resources. So that's, uh, so now. There's a further question, sorry. Yes. The leaseholder, hmm. does he have any right to transfer the lease? Yeah, now once the patta is issued, patta is issued, so naturally he has the right to transfer the land. Yes. So um, uh, why does a um, autonomous district council encourage encourage a uh, patta system because there is revenue generation, tax collection. So that's a source of income for the uh, autonomous district council. So if there are, if they, if it, if it doesn't issue pattas, the land remains the property of the Nokma, and Nokma is not is not bound to pay any tax to the ADC. So autonomous district council automatically says now we, the more income we have, the better. So therefore, more pattas, more revenues. So ADC encourages it. Third point, why why more and more a patta system? Banks demand patta as collateral. Um, I think uh, Professor uh, Mr. Varghese mentioned about um, cash crops, rubber plantations that, that go on. In Garohuls, in a big way, rubber plantation has taken uh, deep roots. And for a rubber uh, plantation for a, or any long-term investment, you need to have money. And uh, which mean, there was also subsidy that was provided by uh, banks. And therefore, to get the subsidy, you have to have something to mortgage as collateral. So land would be that. But then here it is, common property resources. People do not have a piece of land. There was nothing to mortgage. So therefore, they were pushed to go to the district council, get the patta, get the document, and then deposit it as mortgage and get the loan. So therefore, that was the third reason. Fourth reason is, development activities of government. So the development projects, especially road construction, lots of communal, uh, so, uh, uh, Nakma or Akhang land, communal land was acquired by the government, rightfully so. Now, <clears throat> since this land was Nakma's land, common land, it went without any compensation. So government acquired it, used the uh, uh, 1894 Land Acquisition Act, used, uh, acquired the land, and uh, no compensation was paid. So people think now, oh, there is a chance of getting compensation. Maybe if you have the patta, then there is, you, can, you can claim compensation. So that was another reason why. may not be a very strong reason, but one of the reasons. Five, population increase. Less land, more people. Land-man ratio has decreased. So therefore, uh, <coughs> patta again. Six, uh, patta system, uh, patta leads to liberation from the control of nokma. This is an important point. I will give you uh, data in the next slide. Lots of people are wanting a uh, patta document because they will be away from the control or the thraldom of the Nokma. Otherwise, they are under the control of Nokma. Nokma would say, okay, you're owning this land. Next year, he may say, no, no, I want that land back. It belongs to me. You go get away to another piece of land. So Nokma can call the shots. So to get away from the Nokma's uh, uh, authority, uh, many people would like to have land for themselves. 
and seven common ownership leads to conflict um, we know com in, in, in a situation like common land where okay we may say things are nicely demarcated but within a piece of land there are chances that the one family claims this is the land that I uh, I cultivated in the last cycle of June and therefore I'm going there another party may say no no I did that so a lot of conflict that take place in common land can be avoided if I have a patta uh, marked for myself. So therefore, these are the uh, reasons that are uh, put forward as uh, reasons for um, uh, attaining or obtaining patta document. What is it like? What is the feel in the district? This is a study that the organization that I belong to, we did about three or four years ago. And this is the roughly a sort of a, uh, you know, uh, data that we have across. There are three uh, districts there, West West Garo Hills, East Garo Hills, and South Garo Hills. We chose about uh, 15 villages from these uh, uh, three uh, three districts, five in, a, five in a district. So 82% of the participants mentioned, yes, we want Patta system. We would like to have individual land ownership. 16% felt unhappy, and 2% remained uncertain. Now, 82% who mentioned we are happy, I mentioned the reasons why they went went for Patta. Now, 16% who are unhappy, that I should mention, why are they unhappy? They think that their traditional um, land ownership system would be affected, especially the culture which is tied to the land, um, uh, land uh, uh, holding pattern, the entire Nokma system, the so-called Akang land, Akang land is common land. All this would be affected badly, and their culture would be affected. So these 16% fall into that category. And 2% remain uncertain, fine, doesn't make a difference for me. That's our part. <coughs> Unresolved issues. What are the issues that crop, crop up from what we have uh, said just now? Future of Akung land. It's a dilemma. I mentioned 82% and 16%. 82% saying we want, we want uh, individual own ownership. Which means Akang land would be simply, uh, Akang land has to make way for Patta system. But on the other hand, you have the traditional lobby saying, no, we want the, we want this system. There is this tension that's going on in the in the Garo society itself between the traditional and the modern leadership. Um, what to do with the Akang land? We want the common land. Other groups saying, no, we want individual land because that has a future. We can invest. We can have more profit. We can have more autonomy. So that's the first issue. Second is, can Akang be recognized as collateral? This is a suggestion made by the traditional lobby. What are they saying? The banks demand the patta as collateral, but can the common property or Akang land, can it be taken as a collateral? Which means if you take Akang as collateral, then you need not go for patta system. So to stop that Pata system, let Akang, let the, let the, let the Nokma issue a non-objection certificate, NOC, let that be taken as a collateral. Third, role of the district council contested. I will talk about it in the next slides. The first point there, the ADC has been issuing pattas to those who produce the necessary documents. The next thing, um, it is good to uh, explain the procedure. How, how does it take place? The ADC does not on its own issue the patta. The individual concern has to submit the documents. And one of the important documents that the individual, individual has to submit is the NOC or the non-objection certificate from the village chief or the Nokma, he has to produce it. It is on that uh, on that basis that the district council, land record department, would uh, revenue department would issue the patta. So there is a procedure that has to be followed. And in the beginning, it is annual patta, one year, and it has to be renewed. And then uh, what is known as periodical patta, ten years, and so that's how it proceeds. And the ADC thinks they do uh, very legal work. They, are according, they, they act according to the Constitution of India, that is six schedule. What do the Nokmas say? Nokmas feel that the ADC has crossed its boundary of jurisdiction. 
I will repeat this point later. One of the reasons why fixed schedule was introduced in the Northeast, why autonomous, autonomous district council came into existence was to support the culture and the tradition of the tribal communities. That is one of the, one of the reasons. If that is one side of the story, the other side of the story is also six schedule was, or the ADCs were also a sort of a medium to lead these traditional uh, political system to into a democratic liberal institutions. That sort of a shift was also envisaged when this particular provision was introduced in the constitution. What we see is a tension between these two. On the one hand, the ADC is supposed to safeguard, preserve, if you call it, call it so, and support the culture and tradition of the Garo society. On the other hand, it is the same institution, ADC, is also is to lead this society, this Garo uh, society, into modern uh, liberal democratic institutions. So there is these, this tension that is taking place, and that's what the Nakmas is saying. ADC is not doing the work of protecting uh, Garo uh, culture, Garo ethos. What does ADC have to say? The ADC insists that the provisions of the sixth schedule empowers with responsibility of regulating land management, which is so. The provision makes it very clear. So ADC says, I, we are very, very much within the limits of the Constitution. Nakma say that the sixth schedule advises the ADC to strengthen. I mentioned that. Okay. Let's listen. Next. <coughs> now onwards, I will just capture some voices of modern system and traditional system. This is, in general, the procedure. ADC works under six schedule. The administration of land, including parting of lands to individuals, is the responsibility of the ADC. But then ADC does not do this at its own will. If there is a settlement of some plot, that can be done only with the consent of the Akang people. Akang people is Nakma. If Nakma does not give his consent, no settlement can be done. This is a nice sentence, very nicely captures the reality. Administratively, the lands belong to ADC, but customarily or practically, it belongs to the Nokma. Sir, you're not listening. I think it is time to answer your point, the last two points here, last sentence here. Mm -hmm. Administratively, it belongs to the ADC, but practically, what's happening there is it is Nokma. This is an official from uh, ADC, no? what he has to say. Entire land system in the Garo Hills is under the administration of Garo Autonomous District Council. Land belongs to Nakma, who was under the administration, this is nice, who was under the administration of District Council. District Council has a right to give land on lease to those persons who are willing to obtain patta. District Council can issue annual patta or periodic patta. The amount prescribed by the District Council should be paid by the patta holders. I want to make a point here. When a Nakma is uh, a new Nokma is appointed, is elected, he has to be approved by the district council. And that's why district council says Nokmas come under the administration of ADC. So therefore, oh, Nokma may have practical control, but Nokma itself is under the ADC. Therefore, land is ultimately under the control of uh, autonomous district council. Nokma, one of the uh, uh, very powerful Nokma that I interviewed, this is what he said. He's also a member of the Nokma council. According to Garo customary land tenure system, the ADC has no right to issue patta. How can they issue patta to a land owned by the Nokma? The Nokmas are pressurized by the ADC to issue pattas, that is uh, NOC. We are taking the ADC to the court. Our argument is that ultimately it is the Nokma who is the owner of the land. If land holding document is needed, then it has to be issued by the Nokma council and not the ADC. Nokma Council came into existence about 10 years ago, somewhere 2004 or 5. And those of you who know Professor Milton Sangma, uh, he is the main, uh, one of the, one of the uh, inspiring figure behind this Nokma Council. What they are doing is <clears throat> helping out the Nokmas to be effective in the exercise of their duties. Nokmas have tremendous amount of powers which they are not aware. Quite a, shall I say, quite a few, majority of the Nokmas are illiterate. And uh, that is why a lot of smart garos are fooling them and uh, owning a lot of large chunks of land because Nokma is <coughs> illiterate. For a, just for a basket of rice, a basket of a, a bottle of wine, Nokmas are fooled. So therefore, this is where the Nokma Council is playing an important role in training, 
the nokmas, especially giving them information. Yes. Yeah, ADC issuing patta is illegal. Again, uh, not, uh, it's a senior advocate, uh, a Garo advocate again, a Garo who was saying this. There is no law that empowers the district council to issue patta. Yes, they can collect revenue, but they have no right to issue patta. The akhung, the akhung belongs to the machong or mahari, that is the clan. If so, from where does the uh, ADC get the right to issue patta? Uh, it's a controversial point, uh, which can be neatly rebutted by the ADC because six schedule gives the right to the uh, right to the ADC to administer land. But he is questioning if if traditionally Akang belongs to the clan and uh, Nokma represent the clan. How can ADC uh, issue patta? This is not going to the Akang clan. This is so fundamental. It's not. Uh, not even to the uh, high court. Yeah, yeah. I think we can take a few questions. Questions, yeah. I will answer that. That's an important question that I'll answer. Uh, I do not know. Um, this has to be, this is, I think, Professor Sangma, uh, Milton Sangma, making this point. Um, though we don't have a, a Mormon as a gentia, but all the same. Kasi system is something a little different from Garo as far as the patta, uh, uh, the shift of uh, land rights that is taking place. Let's see what it is. The ownership of land lies with the Nakma, who represents a particular Mahari, particular clan. So the owner should have the authority or right to sell or to issue patta, and not the uh, DC, district council it is, or government. This is being done in Kasi and Jaintia Health. The district council has nothing to do with selling and buying of land or collecting of taxes. Yeah, this point I've made already. Um, that, that taking the to, to the yeah. Now on to ADC. Some are saying it is it is it is time that we get rid of get rid of uh, six schedule. Meghalaya is already a state. Why do we need the six schedule? That's right. now, let's see what are the arguments. It has usurped the powers of traditional councils. I have talked enough about it. Second point, by encouraging patta system, it has contributed to the weakening of institution of Nokma and the Garo culture. I have made that point already. It has done very little to safeguard the social practices of Garo, that is the customary law. It is corrupt. No proper accounts of tax collection is maintained, like any other government <laughs> institutions, perhaps. On to, but, what are the arguments that we need it? There is a sentimental attachment. Over 60 years, it has been with us. ADC has been with us, so people want it. One of, the, one of the reasons why people want it is a lot of money that, is, that comes to the ADC. A lot of, therefore, uh, it's an institution, so, so many jobs, employment. So you, you are getting rid of a, a, ADC, so many jobs lost, so much money lost. Yes, the problem is administration, so cleanse the system. Last one, it has already codified the customary laws of the Garo people. Codification of customary law is a, is a controversial topic. Mm. I'll not discuss at length. If you have later, we can discuss about it. So what the Garo uh, ADC has done is it has started the process of of uh, of collating the collating the customary laws. A committee was set up somewhere in 2006-7. Milton Sangma, Professor Sangma, was one of the important convener convener of the committee. They have done the work of putting the customary laws together, and the document is ready. It's in the in the public domain. It is also. Uh, uh, also um, submitted to the ADC, but I don't think it is passed yet, so it is not codified yet. So, but what they're saying is they've done the work. How do we handle this? Just a minute. I question the uh, Nakmas saying, see, so many people among you, Garo people, so many of them are happy with the individual land ownership. Uh, what do we do? How do you handle this? And this is one of the one of the creative suggestions that was given by Anokma. He says, yes, patta system is there. But that patta, let it not be an absolute patta. Let it not mean that uh, the, the person proper gets the entire, you know, total absolute rights over land. What is meant, meant, uh, meant in this paragraph is this. Let the patta be issued. Let the individual proper family concern have the land for itself, for himself. 
But in case the land has to be transferred, it has to be sold, uh, let the individual concerned get permission from Nokma. So that is the point. So there is no absolute ownership. In case of transfer of land, let him get permission from Nokma. So that is controls. So it doesn't mean a person gets a piece of land and then sells it. That is what's happening in many cases. So that can be checked. So Nokma be, uh, be consulted before a land is transferred. So it is diluted, um, no, dilution of the uh, Pata system. What about cadastral survey in uh, Garo Hills? Cadastral survey is not done. And most of Northeast it is not done. We know it. Um, the last time it was done, it was in the plains areas, not the hill areas, plain areas of Garo Hills, 1936. The district council is in favor of cadastral survey, but is discouraged by unfavorable climate. Next point. The Nokma are not in favor. Unfavorable climate is Nokmas. Fear seems to be that the district council is trying to use up their power over land. Ownership would go to the district council. That's the main fear. Nokmas can also benefit from cadastral survey. Right now, they are fooled by smart people about the measurement of land, what I mentioned to you earlier. They say this piece of land between that tree and this tree, the Nokma is not sure how much is the land, whether it is one acre, two acre, he doesn't know. So uh, since cadastral survey is not done, no measurement is done, so he is fooled by smart people, I'm saying. So cadastral survey is done, it can be to the benefit of Nokma. Restriction of on uh, selling of land. Am I giving too much of information? I don't know. Am I boring you all? <laughs> what is meant here is a particular akhang belongs to a particular clan, and people of that particular clan can only own land in that particular clan. Another uh, another person from an outside clan cannot come to that land and own property. Restriction is right now. What is happening is aberration or uh, uh, flouting violation of this particular. Uh, tribal law. So non-Akung people, Akung pe uh, people from outside come to an Akung and own <coughs> land. So restriction is there. Stop that. Yeah. That's it. Land ceiling. Makes sense. Um, already there was some sort of a law passed by in 1980s. It was an executive order which mm -hmm. said only 17, 50 biga or 17 acres of land. That was the, that was the uh, upper limit. <coughs> but a person, Garo Elder says that is too much. 17 acres is too much now, land man ratio is decreased, so there is scarcity of land, just four to five big of land is enough, that sort of, a, you know, have a ceiling. There is a lot of tension between the traditional and the modern political institutions, but there isn't a forum wherein this tension can be dealt. Can we have a forum wherein dialogue can take place between the old and the new political institutions? That's a suggestion. The last slide, I have finished my work. All these things I have made. The suggestions that are <coughs> given for effective administration, I have explained what is diluted concept of Parta, what is carousel survey I mentioned, restriction of transfer of land is explained already, uh, imposition of land ceiling, and then forums of interaction between ADC and the Nokmas. Thank you very much. Thank you, Melville, for that very interesting power presentation. Uh, we have, uh, I think I have the most difficult job here. <laughs> um, we have around 30 minutes to have an open floor. And uh, let's just start with the questions then. Yeah, um, I have no information. I'm trying to get it. I tried to get it from the from the district council. No information available. Tried also from DC. DCs usually have. I in fact talked to a DC before coming. No, they don't have the information. So nobody really knows how big the problem is on either side of the issue. In the, um, but let me put it this way, where we have what is known as plains land and the hills land. Nearly about 80 to 90 percent of the land is hills land for the Garos, where the Garos are saying. In the plains land, there is mixed population. You have Bangladeshi, some Muslims also uh, settle down and so on. Now, in the plains area, that there is already cadastral survey done. Mm -hmm. Fine. Now, hill area. Akhang land is the hill area. That is where the problem, I mean, the, most of the discussion was centered around that. So the information we have is very, very, uh, what shall I say, well, limited from the interviews that I have. So maybe uh, uh, they were not forthcoming. I, I realized the, uh, the uh, land records department, they were a little 
while I had a conversation with them, they were not really forthcoming with the information. Perhaps I had to use a, uh, um, uh, what is that, um, FRI to get the, get the uh, information. But I think quite a lot of land has already been, gone, has, has, has been shifted to, to the individual uh, uh, families. But I will not be able to give, sorry for the. Um, I'm just, I mean, it's a very basic clarification I'm seeking. If the pattas are by the autonomous district councils are being given on the basis of no objection certificates given by NOCMAS, and they are against this whole patta system, why don't they just stop issuing no no objection certificates? I mean, I'm just I guess the the question goes to perhaps decision making. I mean, is it a decision? Is there you know substantial pressure on the NOCMAS from from the group, or are decisions regarding giving the NOCs a joint sort of decision? Um, yeah, my point. Yeah. Quite a lot of NOCMAs are not issuing the NOCs. Quite a lot of NOCMAs are not issuing. So that is the reality. Some of them are issuing because what I mentioned, um, they are illiterate, simple people. And that's why NOCMA Council is playing an important role in educating them and saying, no, you have huge responsibility protect, to protect the Akang land. Don't issue the NOCs. So that is where the NOCMA Council is playing an important role in, in training them. One. Two, just a minute. It is not that NOCMA takes the decision. Nokma, the man, proper represents the property of the woman. Wife is the real owner, if you have to say. Wife is the real owner. And uh, wife is supported by her clan. So <clears throat> any land that has to go, the Nokma has to consult the so-called uh, wife's brothers in a way. It is, though matrilineal, it is matri matri patriarchal in a way. The men have to uh, give uh, uh, consent. But a lot of the time, Nokma doesn't do that. Nokma doesn't do that. He straight away issues NOC. Therefore, a lot of cases are in the court just now because Nokma simply issued an NOC without consulting the larger group which he is, which should be consulted. Uh, I think I would like to add to that and probably um, seek uh, comments from you as well because I was going to ask you that there is uh, obviously this controversy whether Nokma is the owner or the custodian of uh, the land and actually uh, whom does the land belong to and there have been many court cases where uh, the Nokma of ABC has uh, you know given the land to somebody as compensation and it went into courts first with the Garo District Council and then with the Guwahati High Court and then back to Council, and it was established, I think the recent um, uh, judgment was that indeed the decision was wrong and that the land is not owned by the Nokma. So that kind of uh, shows where the, uh, where the legal uh, course, uh, you know, uh, is headed in uh, that. And, uh, and of course, it's open to lots of uh, changes. And another point which I wanted to mention was that you've mentioned this Nokma Council. Uh, and the very fact that something like Nokma Council has been set up, it also points probably uh, to the fact that the ADCs have not been uh, uh, been you know functioning as a representative body uh, of the traditional system. So probably that also leads us uh, because I'm a political scientist. So I would uh, I, I would also read into it uh, that probably uh, the ADCs have not performed their democratic uh, representative role, which they were expected to or intended to by the sixth schedule. Yeah, I agree with both your points, um, Kavita. Yeah. It is uh, related to this. Uh, as you said, Garos are matrilineal people, right? That is one, one of the things. And land so belongs to women, but Nokmas, ADC members, and the rest of the which are called Darbar and Meghalaya, they are all male bodies, okay? Yeah. So land has another feature which is very important, that women as a group are being deprived of their land rights, either through consent of the brothers and sometimes, uh, uh, and it is going to largely to husbands and brothers of the women, kind of. Uh, and there is a... Uh, so whole, which is a serious problem in rest of India, if you see the land rights, because uh, uh, there are no precise records, but uh, uh, about less than 9% women own land in rest of India. And here, where was the women's uh, land rights were there in Garo Hills and Khasi Hills uh, and Meghala, you find that that is also being uh, turned into patriarchal system very kind of a, with a very deliberate uh, move and with the full consent of or full uh, half consent of the tribal people themselves that is a, so this is a very important feature mm -hmm. that needs to be recognized and 
and is a, as much a part of the environment and human system uh, in creating an unequal society. Thank you so much. I wanted your views. Yeah, I'll go backwards. Um, uh, you brought the gender aspect. Now, one of the uh, uh, implications of this uh, Pata system is when the land is is uh, uh, is uh, given as a permanent uh, piece of uh, property to a particular family. It is many many cases it is registered in the name of the man. So that's very clear, getting away from the uh, matrilineal system. But at least in, in 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 the past, the land belonged to the woman. At least in and <laughs> the ure it belonged to. Okay, de facto, uh, the men uh, called the shots. Fine, the ure it belonged to her. But now. The URE, because uh, registration is done in the name of the man. And I tried to get again the information from the land records department, tried to see the gender implications. Couldn't get, but I'm, I'll follow that story. Very important to keep in mind, right?